بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم ما بعد proceed in inshallah we will uh, go over this will be a little bit different from the usual classes uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you how it will be different but inshallah we in the next uh, three sessions that we have together we'll go over uh, as much of this book as we as we can cover inshallah this is Ibn Qayyim's uh, book, Patience and Gratitude. Uh, it is a translation, it is a, like an abridged translation from Uddat al Sabirin or the Thirat al Shakirin, or uh, it's an abridged translation from Uddat al Sabirin or the Thirat al Shakirin, or Aidat al Sabirin or the Thirat al Shakirin. So uh, the, the, the name of the book itself can be said in two, in two ways. Uh, sabirin means what? From wa'da, ya'idu wa'dan, wa'dallahi, that's the promise. So sabirin, the promise of the patient. So Allah's promise to the patient. sabirin, Allah's promise uh, to the patients, to the, to the patient. وَذَخِيرَةُ الشَّاكِرِينَ And the khira is what? Is the, the assets of a shakirin, the grateful. Uh, or you could also say that the khira would be the tool, uh, the armamentarium of the shakirin or the grateful. Uh, so the khira, the khira is basically the assets of the uh, grateful. And we will, uh, you know, see how patience and gratitude are linked together. Uh, patience and gratitude are linked together. So if you say, عِدَةُ sabirin, it will mean, mean the promise of the patient. And if you say, عُدَّةُ sabirin, it will be the tools of the patient. Uh, the tools of the patient. وَذَخِيرَةُ uh, الشَّاكِرِينَ So this is a book about patience and gratitude. Patience and gratitude. Uh, because patience and gratitude, as we will see in this book, uh, are uh, you know two different manifestations of faith. Together, they comprise all of faith. So faith is divided into two halves. Patience is one half, and gratitude is the other half. And we will come to see how. Now, uh, we said that this is going to be a little different because we will want you to be active participants and we will want you also, we also want to cover the, uh, the book, read from the book so that we could benefit uh, from uh, the author's uh, writing. Uh, although, you know, this is an abridged, uh, you know, version of the book, but we still could benefit from reading the book together. So I'll ask one of you to read. So we will begin, inshallah, from the author's prologue uh, or introduction of the author and because it, uh, it is important that we start by Alhamdulillah, Wassalat, Wassalam, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalat, Wassalam, Ala Rasulullah, the author's prologue. Praise be to Allah, the patient, as sabur the thankful, as shakur the most high, al Ali. The greatest Al Kabir, the hearing Al Sami'a, the all seeing Al Basir, the all knowing the Alim, the all powerful Al Qadir, whose power whose power controls every single creature and whose will dominates every single event. This his call to people to prepare for the hereafter has been made so strongly that even the dead could hear it. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his slave and messenger the best of his creation, who did not spare any effort to advise his ummah, the most patient in accepting the decree of Allah and the most grateful for his, for his blessings. Surely he conveyed the message of Allah and proclaimed the truth and endured in the way of Allah that which no human being had ever endured. He followed Allah's commands patiently and gratefully until he gained the pleasure of Allah and attained the highest degree of patience such as had never before been reached. Patience or patient perseverance is obligatory according to the consensus of the scholars, and it is half of faith, amen. The other half of which is gratitude, shukr. Patience is mentioned in the Qur'an around 90 times. 
So he says patience is, is mandatory. Patience is obligatory. Uh, and, you know, someone was asking why is it that we talk a lot about matters that pertain to the heart? Because there are a lot of rulings for the heart that we are uh, ignorant of, uh, that we overlook. The heart has many rulings, like the body has rulings. You know, the actions of the Salah and Siyam and Hajj, and we pay a lot of attention to those rulings. Uh, we often overlook the rulings that pertain to the heart, and there are a lot of rulings. So he started here by saying that this is not uh, like a luxury to talk about patience and to talk about the heart softeners and to talk about purification of the soul. Uh, some of these things are obligatory. Uh, some of these things are essential for one's faith. So by the consensus of the scholars, patience uh, is obligatory. The exercise patience is obligatory. We will come to know that there are, you know, there is the obligatory patience and there is the recommended patience, uh, and there there is uh, also uh, patience that is uh, forbidden and patience that is uh, disliked. Uh, but we will not be calling it like patience for you know, but in, in, t in terms of like uh, perseverance. Uh, some of it is disliked, some of it is uh, forbidden. Patience is obligatory when you're being patient with the obligations of Allah. You're enduring to perform the obligations. It takes endurance, right? Uh, you know, or you're persevering in performing the obligations, such as uh, the various obligations that come with some difficulty or some uh, burden, some taklif, some taklif. Uh, a lot of obligations come with taklif or burden. The word taklif itself means burden. Do you know all of us are called mukallaf, right? If you're, if you're a sane adult Muslim, you're called a mukallaf. And the mukallaf is basically the one who is liable, uh, legally and morally liable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taklif, taklif, <coughs> means liability. Mukallaf means liable, means responsible. That saying, adult Muslim, if you're a saying, adult Muslim, then you are mukallaf, liable, responsible. Not only liable and responsible, but also authorized. Authorized. Because without being a Muslim, you're not authorized to pray. You're even though you're, you're required to pray, but you're not authorized. So if you pray, it does not count for you because you're not authorized, even though you are required. And if you don't pray, it will, be, it will count in your scale of <clears throat> evil deeds. So the mukallaf is the one who is legally and morally uh, authorized and liable, responsible. Taklif comes with a burden. Kallafahu uh, means that he burdened him with a task. He gave him a task which has some burden. Otherwise, it will not be called a taklif. I will not, if, if I ask you to uh, basically pass on the uh, phone to me, that is not taklif. But taklif has a little bit of difficulty or mashakka or burden that comes with it. But the beauty of the word mukallaf, uh, that's why some of the words we need to uh, basically commit to memory in, in Arabic, uh, add them to our vocabulary in Arabic because they, uh, they have no um, accurate translation into English. Uh, they have no counterpart in the English language. Taklif, the beauty of the word taklif is that it, it comes from the same root as loved. Uh, so, kalif al-rajul umra'atahu means that the man loved his wife. Kalif al-rajul umra'atah means that the man loved his wife. So, the three-letter root of the word uh, infers also love, which, which means what? It, which means that you carry out this burden lovingly that you're lovingly carrying out the burden uh, with which you have been tasked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're doing it for Allah, so you're doing it lovingly. So al-mukallaf in this case is the one who is burdened 
with uh, taklif, yeah, and he lovingly uh, performs uh, or carries out the uh, obligations of that burden. So uh, here, patience, when you are patient with uh, the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if those decrees are obligatory, then this patience is obligatory. So sometimes, uh, you know, uh, taklif comes uh, as an obligation, like to, to, uh, to do tar taraweeh is not obligatory. That's to be to patient yourself through the taraweeh is recommended patience. But to, to wait for Salat al-Aisha uh, and, and resist sleep until you pray Aisha or wake up for Fajr, to pray Fajr, that is obligatory. So this patience is obligatory and the other patience is uh, mustahab. So it, it, it varies uh, with that which you're trying to be patient with, that which you're, you're trying to show consistency or you're trying to persevere through. If it is an obligation, then this patience is obligatory. If it is mustahab, then it is mustahab and, and so on. But a big part of patience is uh, obligatory, as he said. Uh, and the root of patience is obligatory. To exercise patience, perseverance, endurance uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is obligatory. Sabr. And inshallah we will talk about you know, how we translate sabr, but I want you, when we come to it, inshallah we will address it in more detail. But I want you to, to uh, remember that sabr means not only patience, but it means perseverance, endurance, Perseverance, endurance, restraint, uh, and uh, consistency. But, you know, just if you have to remember three uh, translations, it is perseverance, endurance, and uh, restraint. Go ahead. Patience or patient perseverance is obligatory according to consensus of scholars, and it is half of faith, amen, the other half of which is gratitude, shukr. Patience is mentioned in the Qur'an around 90 times. The relation of patience to amen is like the relation of the heart to the body. So, just one second. Uh, so, you said that patience is half of faith, half of iman. How come patience is half of iman when we know that iman is six parts? أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره. To believe in Allah, His angels, His books, uh, messengers, uh, the اليوم الآخر, the hereafter, final day, والقدر, predestination. So how could patience be half of faith when faith is six parts? Patience is not one of them. Basically, from the angle, uh, you know. Iman, Iman, uh, the, as a conviction, is this, those six pillars. Iman as a conviction is those six pillars. But Iman is not only about the conviction. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ And Allah would have not wasted your Iman. And Allah would have not, can, you know, Condemned to vanishment, your iman. What iman is Allah talking about here? Your prayers towards Jerusalem. Allah would have not wasted your prayers towards Jerusalem. So iman is uh, the Prophet said iman Iman is seventy some branches. The highest, of which, uh, the highest of which is La ilaha illallah and the lowest is to remove harm from uh, the road. To remove harm from the road. One of them is belief, faith, you know, action of the heart and the other one is an action of uh, the body. So from the perspective, from one angle, Iman is two parts, patience and gratitude. Which angle this is this? This is the angle of your reaction to the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Awamir, al-awamir wal-aqdar. 
Amr Allah al-Qadari wa Amr Allah al-Sharai. How are you responding to Amr Allah al-Sharai, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are the obligations and the prohibitions? And how are you responding to Amr Allah al-Qadari, the aqdar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the destiny, predestination, Allah's decrees? How are you responding to news about your failure in the exam, your disease, loss of loved ones? That is your response to Amrullah al-Qadari, to the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are you responding to Allah's command to you to lower your gaze when you're walking in the street? To lower your gaze when you see uh, Amrat that you should not be looking at. How are you responding to this? This is not Amr Qadari, this is Amr Sharai. This is a demand from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an emphatic demand, meaning an obligation. Uh, or in this case, an emphatic prohibition, meaning tahreem, that you should not look. So lower your gaze. How are you responding to this? So your response to the decrees of Allah and the commands of Allah, from this angle, the angle of your response to Allah's decrees and commands, faith is only two parts. Patience and gratitude. Sabr and shukr. Because there are good times and hard times. It, during the good times, you have to exercise gratitude. And during the hard times, you have to exercise patience. But keep in mind that the predominant, predominant uh, taklif during the hard times is the taklif of patience. But there is also gratitude. So it is not like during the hard times there will be no gratitude whatsoever. And it is not that during the good times there will be no patience. No, you will need patience in both times and gratitude in both times, but predominantly you need patience during times of hardship and you need gratitude during times of ease and comfort, prosperity and luxury. Yes. Patience is mentioned in the Qur'an around 90 times. The relation of patience to Iman is like the relation of the, uh, the head to the body. And the one who has no patience has no Iman. Allah has commanded patience for the believers in the following ayah, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, sna'inu bis sabri wa salat. O you who believe, seek help with patience, perseverance, sabr, and prayer. Patience has also been a, made a condition for a person's entering paradise and being saved from hellfire on the day of judgment. Allah will say, I have rewarded them this day for their patience and constancy. Patience. They are indeed the ones that have achieved bliss. And Allah commended the people. <laughs> this is in Surah Al Mu'minun. I have rewarded them. Repeat it in English. Uh, I have rewarded them this day for their patience and constancy. They are indeed the ones that have achieved bliss. And Allah commended the patient, those who have patience, when He said, uh, It is righteousness to be firm and patient in pain or suffering and adversity, and throughout all periods of panic. Such are the people of truth, the God fearing. Uh, الصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون Repeat it in English It is righteousness to be firm and patient in pain or suffering and adversity and throughout all periods of panic such are the people of truth and God-fearing Al-Baqarah Allah loves those who are firm and steadfast. In Allah you have muttaqeen. In Allah you have a sabreen. This is Surah Ali Amran. Wallah you have a sabreen. Wallah you have a sabreen. Surah Ali Amran. Allah has told us that He is with those who have patience. This is a special companionship. Ma'iyah. Which means. Ma'iyah. Ma'iyah. Which means that he is protecting and supporting them, which is over and above the ordinary companionship. Which applies to believers and disbelievers alike, whereby Allah has knowledge of them and is watching over them. Allah has told us, and be patient and persevering, for Allah is with those who patiently persevere. 
وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ سورة الأنفاق يا أيها الذين أطيعوا الله ورسوله ولا تنازعوا فتفشلوا وتذهب ريحكم واصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين. And be patient and persevering for Allah is with those who patiently persevere. So the ma'iyya, the companionship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we, uh, Allah is with us all the time with His hearing and vision, watchfulness. Allah is watching over us. But when Allah says, in Allah ma'as sabirin, that He is with the sabirin, He is also with the non-sabirin. He's watching them. He hears, sees, watches. But the ma'iyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sabirin, this is a ma'iyyat, ma'iyyat rahma, ma'iyyat rahma, ma'iyyat hifth, ma'iyyat tadbir, ma'iyyat hirasa, lahum protection, mercy. This is the, the, the ma'iyyat or the companionship of his mercy, uh, his compassion, his protection, that all of this will be with the sabirin. The Prophet ﷺ told us that patience is all good and full of goodness, and said that there is no gift better than patience. Umar ibn Khattab ﷺ said that This was reported by Bukhari and Muslim from Abi Sa'id radiallahu No one was given anything, any gift. خَيَرًا وَأَوْسَعًا مِنَ الصَّبْرِ That is better than patience. Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه said the best days of our lives were ours by virtue of patience. This book has been written to highlight the urgent need for patience and to explain that our happiness in this life and our salvation in the hereafter depend on patience. This book is filled with benefits and readers will benefit from its advice and teachings. What is good and correct in this book is by the help of Allah, and what is mistaken in it is from the shaytan. May Allah forgive the author of and the editor. Allah is the greatest helper, and we put our trust in Him. Chapter 1, the definition of patience. Sabr is an Arabic word which is, uh, comes from a root meaning to detain, refrain, and stop. There is an expression in Arabic, so-and-so was killed, sabran which means that he was captured and de detained until he died. In the spiritual sense, patience means to stop ourselves in despairing, from despairing and panicking, to stop our tongues from complaining, and to stop our hands from striking our faces and te tearing our clothes at times of grief and stress. What scholars have said about patience. Okay, so he's talking about the linguistic origin of sabr. And the linguistic origin of sabr, he said mana, to stop. To restrain, and he mentioned that you know, Qutila Sabran, that he was killed Sabran, meaning that he was imprisoned until he died. Uh, also, the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet forbade the uh, basically the consumption of the animal that was restrained and shot, restrained and shot. So Sabr is to restrain, to hold back. To withhold, yamna. So it comes from a mana, you know, to, to uh, confine, to, to restrain. But it also comes from other uh, roots, uh, or the, the root, the three lettered root of sabr, which is sabra, infers in mana, which is restraining, or confining, or keeping back, holding. But it also comes from shidda. Uh, it also comes from uh, hardness. It also comes from difficulty. It comes from difficulty because sabr is restrained with difficulty. So it comes from both. Uh, and when, when you say sabira, sabira is a plant that is extremely sour. Uh, so it is extremely difficult to eat sabira because it is extremely sour. So it, it infers this extreme, and it infers this uh, difficulty. You say, Ardun Subur, or a land that is rocky, uh, rubbly, uh, craggy, uh, basically uneven land. It is Ardun Subur, a land that is hard, unpaved, rocky, and uh, full of uh, rocks and so on. 
that is Ardon Sobor. Uh, so, mana uh, withholding and confining and shibda, difficulty, sabr means both. Sabr also means dhamma, which is togetherness. Because if you, if you have sabr, you will stay together. You will keep yourself together. Basically, you will keep yourself, you will stay composed because you have sabr. So sabr, the, the root also comes from dham, which is gathering and collecting. So when you say, uh, uh, for instance, subratul ta'am, which is a bundle of, or subratul khudrawat, a bundle of vegetables. The bundle of vegetables is called subra, which comes from bundling, gathering, keeping together. So it has these three different meanings or inferences. Al-mana, which is restraint, shidda, which is difficulty, and also uh, the togetherness. Dham, which is uh, togetherness. Because you restrain yourself with difficulty because it is not easy. It, there is, it, it is hard. So with difficulty, and you keep yourself together. You stay composed in the face of the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, may uh, be unfavorable. What scholars have said about patience. Some scholars have defined patience as a good human characteristics or, or a good human characteristics or a characteristic or a positive psychological attitude by virtue of which we refrain from doing that which is not good. Human beings cannot live a proper, healthy life without patience. Abu Uthman said, the one who has patience is the one who has trained himself to handle difficulties. Amr ibn Uthman al-Maliki said, patience means to keep close to Allah and to accept calmly the trials he sends without complaining or feeling sad. Al-Khawas said, patience means to Khawas. Khawas. Hmm. The Khawas said, Patience means to adhere to the rules of the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Another scholar said, Patience means to refrain from complaining. <coughs> Ali ibn Abi Talib said, anhu, Patience means to seek Allah's help. Is it better to have patience than a time of difficulty or to be in a situation which just does not require patience? Abu Muhammad al-Hariri said, Patience means not seeing any difference between times of ease and times of hardship, and being content at all times. I, Ibn al-Qayyim, said, uh, say this is too difficult, and we are not instructed to be like this. Allah has created us in such a way that we feel the difference between times of ease and times of hardship. And all that we can do is refrain from panicking at times of stress. Patience does not mean feeling the same at both easy and difficult times. That is beyond us and is not part of our nature. Having an easy time is better for us than having a difficult time. As the Prophet ﷺ said in this well-known hadith, in a well-known dua, if you are not angry with me, then I do not care what happens to me. But still, I would rather have your blessings and favor. This does not contradict the hadith which says, no one has ever been given a gift better than patience. A better gift than patience. Because that refers to a time that a test or trial has befallen a person, but ease is still better. Ease is better. This is a very good example of when we hear like a statement from one of our righteous predecessors. Uh, those that are righteous are, you know, of our great predecessors, the Imams and the Mujtahideen and so on. We always have to treat them with great respect. But it does not mean that every statement will have to be taken at face value or have to be, will not be uh, basically uh, counter-checked or checked against the sunnah of the Prophet While maintaining all respect to the sayer, the saying will have to be examined. And if it was not, you know, in accordance with the way of the Prophet or it sounds to be unattainable or extreme, then we, we, we do not have to accept it. So when Abu Muhammad al-Hariri rahimahullah says, patience is to have no difference uh, between times of ease and times of hardship. Is this human? No, it's not human. 
Did the Prophet Sallallahu laugh and, and the, was he happy at times and sad at times? Yes, he was. Allah said to him, We know that you are saddened by what they say. So he was saddened by their rejection. And uh, at times he uh, rejoiced. It is, it is not natural to think that the Prophet ﷺ felt the same way after the victory of Badr and after the defeat of Uhud and after the death of Hamza radiallahu anhu. He did not. He felt different. It, it, so patience is not to be indifferent uh, to the decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but patience is to restrain yourself from complaining. It is to restrain yourself from rejection, it is to train yourself from resenting the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the decree of Allah. Even though you dislike it, you dislike pain and suffering. And human beings naturally dislike pain. They naturally dislike defeat. They naturally dislike failure. They naturally dislike loss. You will dislike it. You will dislike the thing itself. But as the decree of Allah, you're accepting it without any resentment in your heart and with complete surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to the decree. You're not surrendering to the defeat. You're surrendering to Allah's decree. But then you will try to get, you know, to move beyond the defeat. You will try to counter it which, with which, whatever means uh, you can. But you're accepting Allah's decree without a show of resentment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with complete surrender uh, to his decree. Do you see the difference between not surrendering to the decree? Uh, Omar said, We counter the decrees by decrees uh, uh, because you know that this was decreed. Whatever happened in the past is decreed. But don't surrender to it. Like if you got defeated at the beginning of the battle, it does not mean that you say, well, it, it looks like Allah wants us to get defeated. You still continue to strive and you still continue to uh, uh, you know, uh, succeed in uh, your attempts. You're not surrendering to the decree, but you're surrendering to the, to the uh, basically the, the, uh, the commander of that decree. Uh, you're, you're saying, I, I accept what you decree, but then I don't know what you, what you have decreed for me in, in the, tomorrow, or the next hour, or the next minute. So I'll try to resist that decree. I, I, so I, I got my cancer. I will fight it as much as I can. I'll fight the cancer as much as I can. But I am accepting that you had given me cancer. I accepted you're giving me cancer, I will now fight cancer as much as I can without resentment of Allah's decree, with acceptance and without resentment. But the acceptance of his decree that he gave you cancer does not mean that you will surrender to the cancer itself. Yes. Yes. This is the dua that the Prophet ﷺ made uh, on his way out of Ta'if after he was rejected by uh, the people of Ta'if. Uh, Allah said, the, the Prophet ﷺ made this dua in which he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have no anger, uh, with, if you are not angry with me, then I don't care of what I endure or what I endured. But then the Prophet ﷺ said, But your ni'ma, your afiyah, afiyah means basically safety from all hardships. Safety from psychological, physical, financial hardship. It is to be given safety, to be given security, to be you know, uh, protected from all hardships. That is what afiyah means. Afia is financial, psychological, physical uh, afia. Afia, the, the physical afia is health. Financial afia is uh, prosperity. 
afiyah of the mind is the peace of mind, contentment, uh, and, and so on. Patience and shakwa, complaint. Shakwa falls into two categories. The first type means to complain to Allah, and this does not contradict patience. It is demonstrated by several of the prophets, for example, when Ya'qub said, I only complain of my distraction and anguish to Allah. Innama ashku bathi wa huzni ila Allah. Earlier, Ya'qub said, Sabrun jameel, which means patience is most fitting for me. The Quran also tells us about Ayyub uh, and remember Ayyub dropped when he cries to his Lord, truly distress has seized me. Allahumma inni masani ad-durra. Anta rahmur rahmi. Rabbi inni masani ad-durra wa anta rahmur rahmi. The epitome of patience, the Prophet sallallahu prayed to his Lord, O oh Allah, I complain to you of my weakness and helplessness. Musa السلام, prayed to Allah saying, O oh Allah, all praise is due to you, and complaint is made only to you, and you are the only one from whom we seek help and in whom we put our trust, and there is no power except by your help. The second type of complaint involves... Okay, so, so the first type of complaint, patience, there is beautiful patience. You see Sayyidina Ya'qub السلام, and Surat Yusuf. Uh, when, when they told them that uh, Yusuf you know, was eaten by the wolf, what did he say? He said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ مُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ وَجَاءُوا عَلَى قَمِيسِهِ بِدَمٍ كَذِبٍ قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَمْرًا فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ مُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ uh, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Then let it be beautiful patience. That is what Ya'qub said. Sabrun Jameel, let my patience be beautiful patience. Sabrun Jameel. Because there is Sabr Jameel and Sabr Ghayr uh, Jameel or Sabr Qabih. Sabr Jameel is the Sabr without complaining. Sabr, because all people eventually will have to endure. Because you can't change the decrees of Allah. So you will have to endure them. But the Sabr Jameel is Sabr without complaining without resentment. He said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ But then, he said, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I complain only to Allah. Which means that complaining to Allah is not counter to beautiful patience. It is not the complaining that is counter to beautiful patience. It is complaining to the people that is counter to uh, beautiful patience. Uh, as one of the poets said, لا تشكرنا إلى العباد فإنما تشكر رحيمة إلى الذي لا يرحمه. Do not complain to the ibad, for when you complain to the ibad, you are complaining to uh, the one who is merciless against the one who is most merciful. Yeah, but when you complain to the ibad about the decrees of Allah, you are complaining to merciless ibad against the merciful Allah. فَإِنَّمَا تَشْكُرْ رَحِيمًا إِلَى الَّذِي لَا يَرْحَمُ لَا تَشْكُرْنَا إِلَى الْعِبَادِ Don't complain to the ibad. فَإِنَّمَا For when you do that, تَشْكُرْ رَحِيمًا إِلَى الَّذِي لَا يَرْحَمُ You're complaining against the most merciful to those who have no mercy. So, now, then he will talk about how complaining to the people is counter to beautiful patience. Complaining to Allah is not. Yeah, make dua, you ask Allah, Rabbi, inni masani ad-dur, wa anta rahmur rahmeen, oh Allah, I have been touched by hardship, I have been touched by harm, and you are the most merciful of all those who are merciful, like dua Sayyidina Ayyub, uh, and dua Sayyidina Yunus, la ilaha illa anta subhanak inni kuntu min al-zadameen. So you complain to Allah, but you don't complain uh, to uh, the people. Yes, go ahead. The second type of complaint involves complaining to people, either directly through our words or indirectly through the way we look and behave. This is contradictory to, contradictory to patience. Opposing forces. Psychologically So speaking, if you complain to the people, it's contradictory to patience. But what about when the Prophet ﷺ used sometimes to vent out to people? Didn't he vent out to Omar and Abu Bakr and Umm Salama? If, if you vent out when you know that there is, a, that is someone trustworthy that could 
to relieve your distress by wise words or could provide you solutions or could help you out uh, in the face of your uh, hardship, then that is not complaining to them. That is seeking the, their help in that which they have power over. So if I go and, and say to my wife, what, you know, this and that happened to me at work uh, today, seeking her, uh, you know, basically consoling me or uh, it, it, didn't the Prophet do this with Umm Salama when the Sahaba uh, refrained from shaving their heads after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and the Prophet Sallallahu felt sad that the Sahaba are not obeying his command to, to shave their heads and he went and you know confided into Umm Salama and, and then Umm Salama advised him to go out and shave his head and everybody will follow suit if he does and he did and they, they shaved their heads so this is not complaining this is basically seeking the counsel seeking the you know counsel the good counsel seeking the help of people in that which they could help you can't you know you can't, you can't go to like a lay person and tell them I need your I, I, I don't have kids I need your help so that I could have kids. You know, that is beyond their capacity, and this would be shared. This would be shared. Uh, but if you go to like a physician uh, who specializes in fertility, and you tell them this is my condition, and so on and so forth, that is within their capacity, so that is permissible. So you, you seek the good counsel of the people, you seek the help of the people, in within their power, within their power. If you seek help from the people uh, in matters that are outside their power, then that is that could be even a form of uh, shit. You don't go to someone and you tell them, uh, you know, I need to go to Jannah. He, well, he has no, you know, no power over this. Uh, but you could ask them to help you out, you know, can you give me, give me a cup of water, for instance, or some. Still, despite the fact that this is, this is uh, permissible to ask the people for things within their capacity, within their reach, within their power, Abad ibn Samit tells us that Dayana Rasulullah or a part of the hadith of the, the bay'ah or the, uh, the pledge of allegiance that they used to give to the Prophet when they accepted the Islam according to some narrations and to not ask anything of anyone not ask people for anything to not ask the people for anything the, the Sahaba took this to heart to the extent that if they were on top of their horse, they, they had mounted their horse, and their, you know, something falls from, from, from their hand on the ground, they would not ask anyone to pick it up and hand it to them. They would come down, pick it up, and then mount their horse one more time. Because they took that advice of the Prophet ﷺ to heart. And to not ask anything uh, uh, from the people, and that is like a sign of reliance on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, whenever possible. And if it will not cause you harm, if it will not cause you harm, certainly we do need the people. You know, we we uh, we need to ask the people for help whenever we need to. But if you could do it yourself, do it yourself. That is the gist of the, the advice of the Prophet ﷺ. Whenever you could do it yourself, do it yourself. Don't ask people to do it for you. Do it yourself. If you need someone to help you out, then go. there is no harm in, in asking the people to help you out. But anything that you could do yourself, do yourself. It's a sign of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sign of integrity of one's character. Yes. Opposing forces. Psychologically speaking, every person has two forces at work within him or her. 
One is the driving force, which pushes him towards some actions, and the other is the restraining force. So, قوات إقدام وقوات إحجام. The driving force is قوات إقدام, you know, uh, and the restraining force is قوات إحجام. And basically, he will tell us here that people have, you know, the, the best of people are the people who have the driving force and the restraining force. The driving force is the force that will uh, help you, that will push you, that will propel you to do good and to be active, to feed the poor, to help the needy, to pray the night prayers, to wake up and fast, to go to work and do everything. That is, that's called driving force. You're doing all of this stuff, you have quwat iqdam. Uh, you're doing the ta'at, uh, you know, you, yeah, all the ta'at, whenever you're invited to something good, you rush to it. If they're, if they're going out to you know, feed the hungry, you're, you're with them. If there is a janaza, you're following the janaza. If there is you know, time, adhkar sabah wa masa, you don't miss out on adhkar sabah wa masa. You finish your adhkar, it is, there is a halaqa, you stay with for the knowledge. That is quwat iqdam. And Quwwat al-Ihjam is what to restrain from that which Allah prohibited. It is that to be able to lower your gaze when you're walking out on the street. And it is to be able to stay away from the Muharram of Allah. It is to be able to stay away from, you know, haram money. You know, that is restraining, restraining force. Quwwat al-Ihjam. This, this haram money that is accessible to you and you could take it, but you restrain yourself from it. People vary. Some people have both, those are the best of people. And some people have none, neither, and those are the worst of people. And some people have more of one than the other. They, 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 you know, they have the ability to do a lot of good things, but they are weak in front of temptations. In the face of temptations, they are weak, and they fall for the temptations. Uh, and, and there are those people that are strong in the face of temptations, they, they, or they have the ability to restrain themselves, but they are weak in, in their uh, driving force. They don't do much. They don't do much that is good or bad. They're just not doing much. Uh, and there are those people that do much good, but they still do bad, because they have this driving force, but they don't have much of the restraining force, and the best person of all is the one who has both the driving force and restraining uh, force. Yes? I was just going to ask if there was, um, among the two, is there one that's better than the other? Any the one who's... That's a debate between the scholars. What is more beloved to Allah? The performance of the ta'at? or they're uh, refraining from the muharramat. Some of the people may say it is refraining from the muharramat because the Prophet ﷺ said, Whenever I command you to do something, do of it as much as you could, and whenever I prohibit you from something, abstain. He did not say abstain from as much as you could. He just said abstain, refrain, stop. Uh, so there is more, the, the, the demand to refrain from muharramat is more emphatic. But this is basically because everybody could refrain from the muharramat, but not everybody could do uh, all the, 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 you know, can perform all the commands. You know, some people, a lot of people may not be able to fast, may not be able to pay zakah because they don't have money, may not be able to go to hajj because they are unhealthy, may not be able, so awamir, uh, but ultimately, fa'l al-ta'at is more beloved to Allah than tark al-muharramat. The performance of good deeds is more beloved to Allah than refraining from uh, bad deeds. Because fa'l al-ta'at is a characteristic of the believers, is a special characteristic of the believers that is not shared by the non-believers. But tark al-muharramat even the non-believers, sometimes they refrain from muharramat. Not all the non-believers, you know, so the non-believers, not all of them are, you know, they, they commit 
haram. Some of them are married, and some of them are, you know, uh, they don't uh, steal, and they don't, they don't do uh, much of the, that which is uh, haram. Uh, but it is only the believers that pray, it is only the believers that fast, it is only the believers uh, that do these things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a whole mark, a signature characteristic of the believers, ta'ala ta'ala. That is why it is more beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patience essentially harnesses the driving force to push us towards good things and the restraining force to hold us back from actions that may be harmful to ourselves or others. Some people have strong patience when it comes to doing what is good for them, but their patience is weak with regard to restraint from harmful actions. So we may find that a person has enough patience to perform acts of worship, salah, salam, hajj, but has no patience in controlling himself and refraining from following his whims and desires. And in this, and in this way we may have we may commit haram deeds. Conversely, some people may have strong patience in, absta in abstaining from forbidden deeds, but their patience in obeying commandments and performing ibadah is too weak. Some people have no patience in either case. And needless to say, the best people are those who possess both types of patience. So, a man may have plenty of patience when it comes to standing all night in prayer and enduring whatever conditions of heat or cold may be prevalent, but no patience at all when it comes to lowering his gaze and refraining from looking at women. Another may have no problem in controlling his gaze, but he lacks the patience which would make him enjoin the good and forbid the evil. And he is so weak and helpless that he cannot strive against the kuffar and mushrikun. Most people will be lacking in patience in any one case, and a few lack, in, and a few lack it in all cases. Further, definitions of, uh, further definition of patience. A scholar said, to have patience means that one's common sense and religious motives are stronger than one's whims and desires. <clears throat> Can I repeat that? Uh, I just want to want to tell you one thing that is important. Uh, we have about two more pages to read, so it will take about half an hour or more. I will not be offended at all if you leave uh, at any time if you have any engagements. But I will continue to, until we finish the, the two pages. A scholar said to have patience means that one's common sense and religious motives are stronger than one's whims and desires. Okay, let's rephrase this because the, the scholar said ثَبَاتُ دَاعِي الْعَقْلِ وَالدِّينِ فِي مُقَابَلَةِ دَاعِي الطَّبْعِ وَالشَّهْوَةِ ثَبَاتُ دَاعِي الْعَقْلِ وَالدِّينِ فِي مُقَابَلَةِ دَاعِي Thabat is what? It is withstanding. It is uh, steadfastness. Steadfastness of da'i al-aql wa the The da'i is the caller. Da'i, caller, preacher, caller. The da'i, the caller of al-aql, reason, wa deen, Let's translate this as piety for, 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 for ease, you know. Uh, so the, 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 uh, the, the steadfastness of, of the caller of reason, aql, with deen, piety, in the face of the caller or against the caller of tab, natural instincts, with shahwa, and desires natural instincts and desires. Natural instincts, or we could even call this natural indisposition, but the reason why I don't want to call it natural indisposition is that we use this translation for fitra. And fitra has positive connotations, not negative connotations. But taba, which is your natural uh, uh, instincts, has positive and negative connotations. It could be your tab, it could be, you could be easygoing. Uh, you could be easygoing and stingy. Someone else may be brave uh, and uh, aggressive. Bravery is good, aggression is bad. Or they may be forbearing, uh, but you know, uh, coward. 
so it's a combination of things, your tabba, your natural uh, inclination is very diff- is, is, is different from fitra. When we speak about fitra, we speak about the tabba or the nature uh, in, the, in the positive connotation only. So when we speak about the nature of the natural indisposition of humanity to worship the one Lord alone, to worship God alone, that would be a fitra. So it is part of the tabba, but it is not all of your uh, tabba. Because tabba is, is everything that, that basically was uh, uh, installed in you. So Amr and Abu Bakr, they have different tabba, right? They have, the, they, they have different natural indispositions. But both of them were able to control their tabba and tame their tabba uh, until their tabba became in accordance with the uh, divine will and the divine decrees and commands. So, but they did. They they started out from from very different places. One was always, even before Islam, Abu Bakr was always the kind and quiet and calm and composed and you know uh, gentle. Omar, the strong, the brave, the like uh, sometimes overbearing uh, person. And so they are coming from two different places two different tabbas, but they were able to control their tabbas until they became, they, they brought them under control and in accordance with the will and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the liking of Allah. So Abu Bakr became this uh, brave and, you know, uh, daring person during Hurub al the wars of the apostates. And uh, Omar became this very gentle and, you know, uh, tender person during his rulership, you know, dealing with his, uh, the, the weak and the poor of his ra'iyya or uh, of his subjects. He is extremely tender, extremely gentle. So both of them were able to bring their taba under control. So here, the scholar that said this was in Ghazali, rahimahullah, he said, "Thabatu da'i, thabatu da'i, al-aql wa din the color of reason, the inside you. There is a color that, that tells you, stick to reason, adhere to reason. Reason, you know, is good. To be like reason, being reasonable, re- common sense, reason is good. Uh, and adhere to piety, adhere to your deen. And then there is another caller that comes from your natural instincts that will tell you, you know, oh, she's such a beautiful woman. She's flirting with you, you should uh, reciprocate. Uh, that is the natural instinct. The tabi, you know, da'i al-tabi al-shahwa. It is natural for men and women to have this attraction to each other. So it is natural if a woman, like a beautiful woman is flirting with a man, it is natural for this man to reciprocate. That is the color of your natural instinct, the color of your shahwa, of your lust, or your desires. But da'i al the color of reason and deen, piety, Keep in mind, that is not even only the color of piety, of piety, but the color of reason also. Because a reasonable uh, man who has integrity and has honor, even if they are not Muslim, they will say, yeah, but I'm married. You know, I do not want my wife to, to, do, to do this, so I, I should not do it either. So the, the, the color of reason is not to be ignored, because reason, the, the reason that Allah had given you is good as long as this reason is not defiant of the deen. Once it starts to defy the deen, then it is bad, then it's corrupted uh, reason. So every time you are being called by the da'i al-shahwa, the caller of shahwa, or lust, or desires, da'i al-tabr, the caller of your natural instincts. My natural instinct when, you know, if Yusuf 
for instance, punched me, my natural instinct as a man, uh, you know, who has like, you know, uh, uh, sort of, uh, is sometimes even not in, in the negative, but you know, who has courage, who, uh, uh, who is not, you know, coward, is to, to punch him back. But I could say to myself, what if I refrain? What, how, you know, yeah, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at this uh, positively? Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward me from restraining myself? Uh, let me see why he punched me. Let me see why he spoke ill of me. Let me, let me see why he gossiped about me. And let me not just reciprocate, because that would be my natural instinct, to reciprocate. No, I'm not going to reciprocate. I'm going to listen to da'i al-aql wa deen to the caller of the aql, reason, and the deen, and not listen to the caller of natural instincts, tab'a and shahwa, desires. Yes. It is natural for, pe for people to have an inclination towards their desires, but common sense and their religious motive should limit that inclination. The two forces are at war. Sometimes reason and religion win, and sometimes whims and desires prevail. The battlefield is the heart of men. Patience has many other names according to the situation. If patience, if patience consists of restraining sexual desire, it is called honor. The opposite. No, it is called the ifa. And ifa would be chastity. Okay. So patience has many, many, many names, and we will see. All of the good virtues, all of the good virtues. They're, they have a root in patience. They, they're, they're, they are rooted in patience. All of the good versions. Yes. So it is restrained from sexual impropriety. That is called the what? Riffa. Riffa is chastity. Riffa is a good character. Yes. The opposite of which is adultery and promiscuity. If it is or oh, zina. Yeah. If it consists of controlling one's stomach, it is called self-control. It is shiba on nafs, shiba on nafs, which is the satiety of the self. The opposite of which is basically a greed for food. If it consists of controlling one's stomach, it is called self-control. Uh, shiba on shiba, nafs. Shiba on nafs. The opposite of which is greed. If it consists of keeping quiet about that which is not fit to disclose, it is called discretion. It is basically the, to, to uh, keep the secret, keep the secret private. The opposite of which is disclosing secrets, lying, slander, or libel. If it consists of being content with that is sufficient for one's needs, it is called Abstemiousness. Abstemiousness, which is zuhd. Zuhd, you, 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 we don't need to translate zuhd, right? Everybody knows zuhd. Or do we need to translate zuhd? Zuhd? Because zuhd is, is a very like, complicated concept to translate. Zuhd basically is to stay away from all uh, excesses extras. You know, it is disdain for the dunya. It is uh, basically uh, losing interest in all of the excesses of the dunya. Having no interest or losing your interest in all of the excesses of the dunya. Taqwa and Zod are not the same. Taqwa is basically not to be not conscious, to, to be Taqwa is uh, has to do with self restraint for the fear of, for for your uh, fear from God or out of fear from God. But Zod is this interest in the dunya, this interest in the pleasures of the dunya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 so, so, so basically. Eat, to eat more than your need, uh, that is excess. But that is not haram. So it, you're not not muttaqi. If you uh, eat like dessert after your food, it is. It, but zuhd is eating to give that up. So there is, 
you know, Zuhda is to give up all excesses of everything, eating, drinking, you know, uh, uh, residence, uh, car, uh, to give up, to give up all forms of luxury in life, uh, because you have, you, because of you're you're disinterested in life. It's like when, when, when Abu Dhar al uh, used to have no furniture at his home and someone visited him and he said to him, you know, where is your furniture? And he said that we have a different home that we send our furniture to uh, on a regular basis. And uh, so the man said, but you, as long as you live here, you need to have furniture uh, here. Uh, so Abu Zar al said to him, but the, the landlord will not leave us here. Uh, so the landlord will kick us out at any time. So it is basically to, to have this interest in dunya, kun fi dunya ka'annaka gariba wa abar sabil. That is the tra- manifestation of Zohd, to be in this dunya as a traveler or a stranger. Yeah. Mm. If it consists of controlling one's anger, then it is called forbearance. Hen, hen. The opposite of which is impulsiveness and hasty reaction. If it consists of refraining from haste, then it is called gracefulness and steadiness. Waqar. And waqar would be composure. Composure. The opposite of which is to be hot-headed. If it consists of refraining from running away, then it is called courage. The opposite of which is cowardice. If it consists of refraining from taking revenge, then it is called forgiveness. The opposite of which is revenge. Safwa is forgiveness. If it consists of refraining from being stingy, then it is called generosity. The opposite of which is miserliness. Al-jud wal karam, generosity. So you see that patience here is like is everything. So chastity, courage, forbearance, shaja'a, you know, iffa. Uh, Hilm, uh, Waqar, uh, Thabat, Kitman al Sir, Al Safh, Al Maghfira, all of these uh, great qualities are rooted in patience. If it consists of refraining from being lazy and helpless, then it is called dynamism and initiative. Uh, it is uh, Al Kais. Al Kais is competency. Competency. If it consists of refraining from blaming and accusing other people, then it is called chival- chivalry. No. Yeah, it, it is. It, that, that is not a good translation. It is not about refraining from blaming other people. It, it is actually, in, in Arabic, it is. Uh, وَإِنْ كَانَ عَنْ دَعِي إِلْقَاءِ الْكَلَّ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَعَدَمْ حَمْلِ كَلِّهِمْ It is to refrain from throwing your burden on the people and uh, not carrying their burden. So, uh, you know, some people throw their burden on the people, but whenever people have a burden, they refuse to share it with them. Uh, and so, the, yeah, yeah, so that is not muru'a. It is opposite to muru'a. Muru'a is when you uh, hasten to helping the people when they have a burden, you carry it with them, whatever burden, you know, it's not necessarily a physical burden, any burden. You help them out with it, you carry it with them, but you have a burden. When you have a burden of your own, you try to carry it yourself, by yourself. That is tamamun muru'a. That is complete muru'a. And muru'a would be translated best as integrity, if for the lack of a better word. Different names may be applied to patience in different situations, but all are covered by the idea, idea of patience. This shows that Islam in its totality is based on patience. Is it possible to obtain the quality of patience? If a person does not naturally possess the characteristic of patience, he can attain this characteristic by acting as if he does possess it until it eventually becomes second nature. This is what the Prophet ﷺ has told us in the hadith, whoever tries to be patient, 
that Allah will help him to be patient. إنما الصبر بالتصبر. A person can also this is this hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim from Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu. إنما الصبر بالتصبر. Uh, and there is uh, the, the scholars disagree. You know, some so some people said that الطبع يغلب التطبع. That the natural instincts, the natural inclination, or indisposition, will overpower. Uh, your uh, effort, uh, your, your your effort of in changing your natural inclination. Sometimes the natural inclination resurfaces every once in a while, but generally speaking, your effort at change will overpower the natural inclination. We're told this by Allah and His Messenger that we can, because otherwise there would be no hope in change. And uh, human beings would not have the tools to seek completeness and to seek perfection and to seek excellence and all of these things are goals that human beings were demanded, you know, to seek, whether emphatically or less emphatically, they are demanded to seek ihsan, excellence, uh, and and if if we cannot change ourselves, then we. Then no one will uh, will be able to do that, and Allah does not burden us all beyond its capacity. So there is a very beautiful hadith that is reported by Ibn Abi Duni and Khatib al Baghdadi in his book at Tarikh uh, from Abi Hurairah radiAllahu anhu, in which the Prophet sallam said, "Inna al ilm bi tahallum, wa al ilm bi Inna al ilm bi taallum, wa al ilm bi tahallum, wa man yatahra al khayr yuqta." وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ الشَّرَّ يُوْقَى إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ Verily, uh, becoming knowledgeable or the acquisition of knowledge is through learning. Acquisition of knowledge is through learning. وَالْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Hilm, forbearance, is through tahallum. Tahallum is what? Practice of forbearance. Is through practice of Forbearance, to try to, to act like you are forbearing, to try to act like you're forbearing. This is not acting that is dispraised. This is acting so that you may attain the quality of forbearance. You're usually short-fused, you know, hot-headed. Uh, you usually have a bad temper. Uh, but you, you, you say to yourself, I will, you know, try to control myself and try to act forbearing until you become forbearing, you become halim. And the beauty of this is, this is, you know, like another uh, manifestation of how the Prophet ﷺ was given Gawama al-Kalim. Gawama al-Kalim, the most com comprehensive yet concise speech. Comprehensive and concise speech. Because al-Hilm of al-Ta'alim al-Hilm of al this is not just a rhyme. Because the Prophet never was never bound by rhymes. The Quran does never, never, you know, uh, uh, binds itself to rhymes. This is the shi'r that the Prophet ﷺ was deemed above, uh, above it. And the Prophet was deemed above poetry. Because the meanings are more important than the form. And the Prophet would never uh, bind himself to rhymes. But it, it rhymes... Uh, despite the, that it, it does rhyme, but the, 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 the reason why the Prophet put Al-Ilm and Al-Hilm together is that Al-Ilm, which, which is what he started with, this is by agreement of all people uh, attainable through learning, right? All same people will tell you, yes, you know, people learn, you know, acquire knowledge through learning, and that is doable. But many People will say forbearance is a natural inclination or indisposition that cannot be attained unless you were given, granted forbearance, you know, naturally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet told them as much as your, as much as ilm can be acquired through learning, hilm can be acquired through practice. Uh, 
and he who seeks good will be given good ومن يتوقع الشر يوقع أو يتك الشر يوقع and whoever avoids uh, evil will be spared uh, evil yes a person can also strive to control his sexual desire and lower his gaze until these two become second nature the same applies to all other desirable characteristics such as steadiness generosity and courage Everything is acquired through practice. Everything, every good quality is acquired through uh, practice. And patience, being becoming more patient, is acquired by tasabbur, practice of patience. To practice patience. Take it one step at a time, you know, in small increments, because the Prophet said, Habbul Ahmadi in Allah, Adwamuha in Qal, Awmadama. وَإِنْ قَلْ The most beloved deeds by Allah are those that are consistent even if they were little. So take this matter you know, in small increments until you reach your goal of becoming patient and forbearing. Sabur وَحَلِيم Patient and forbearing. That's it. That's the end of that part. Inshallah, next time we will go over uh, the different perspectives on uh, patience and uh, the five categories of patience and other things.